Hey, Greg here. Hello. Today I'm going to answer the question, what is life coaching? So uh, somewhat of an official definition is that life coaching is a form of talk therapy aimed at helping people set meaningful goals and achieve them. Kind of a more simple answer that I like is that life coaching helps people be happier, function more effectively, and to be more resilient. Life coaching has some similarities to therapy, but some big differences. So therapy is generally considered to be more backwards looking. It looks at what's happened in your life previously, in your childhood, in your relationships and so on, that's caused you to be the person that you are today. And maybe to find some explanations for some of the challenges and the problems that you have. Coaching on the other hand is much more forward looking. It's we start from where you're at and we spend a lot of time and effort creating an awareness of kind of who are you, um, what are your beliefs, what are your thoughts, what are your patterns. But we don't really care where they came from, we want to know what they are now and from that we figure out what do you want in the future and how do we move towards that. Life coaching is not about me, the coach, giving advice or telling you what to do. Firstly, I, I don't know what's best for you and I really believe that that we can figure that out best for ourselves. Now the guidance of somebody outside of us, somebody that asks questions, that can share experiences, can be very helpful and that's what I do as a coach. But in the end, you make the decisions and, and you actually create the alternatives and then make the evaluation and decide on those with my help. So one of my main duties as a coach in this role is to do what's to called hold space and that is to approach all of our interaction from really curiosity is my overriding emotion. What's going on with you? And how can I ask more questions to help you get more into your head? And so it's about me not being in my head, not having an agenda, not being judgmental. And that's really one of the skills that I uh, have had to cultivate to become a good coach is this skill of holding space. So I've got two main jobs as a coach. So the first is to figure out where you're at now. What are your, what do you think? What are your feelings? And then help you see the linkage between those things and your actions and the results that you're creating in your life. And I use a framework called the model, which does really a fabulous job of, of helping you see that relationship between your thoughts and your results. So, and, and what, I, what I wanted to say is that we do this by focusing on events now in your life, not in the past, but what happened last week or yesterday. And that's where we get the insight. And we, we do this by looking at specific events. We don't try to solve things at a high level, at an abstract level. Sometimes in a way that clients might initially find a little bit tedious, we focus on little events because that's where the insight is. That's where we can learn. And then in the future, our future success is based on lots of little things. And so our focus is very, very practical. So the second part of the job is once we've created that awareness is to help people move forward. What do they want? Why do they want it? Do you like the why? Is it a why that it's really meaningful that you can commit to and, and get behind? And then how are you going to get there? And we don't focus too much on the how. We can talk about sort of a broad path. But almost any good goal is unknown. Uh, for you, you haven't done it, so the how is unknown. So it's uh, sometimes the how is what is the next step or the next couple steps? And then how do we keep on the path taking ever the next step based on what we learned from preceding steps? And then my role is to help you keep taking action um, to, to stay on the path. Let me talk a little bit about what sort of people seek the help of life coaches, what sort of problems we work on. So one category is people that just want to feel better. They're tired of feeling sad or disappointed or resentful or regretful. And they want to, they want to feel better. So life coaching can do that. People seek life coaches' help for relationships. They, they want to turn relationships that are full of conflict or are kind of empty and disconnected, and they want to they bring those back maybe to where they were or get them to where they never were. And 
that, that's actually a favorite area of mine. It's not my specialty, but it's an area that I do some coaching on. People come to life coaching to develop better life skills, to, uh, to stop procrastinating, to do better with their time management, to develop better habits around eating, sleeping, uh, or exercise. A particular area that's really great for life coaching is for people who are doing well in their lives, but they feel like frauds and imposters. They, are, they're, they live in constant fear that they're going to be discovered, that they don't deserve what it is that they're doing and creating. And they, they want they, some, what they need and what they want is confidence. They want to know that their success is founded on real confidence and that they deserve it. And um, kind of a somewhat related category is people who have achieved big things in their life. They've got success in career or business. And they have the relationship and the house and the kids maybe and the material possessions. But in spite of all that achievement, they feel empty and lost. And they don't know why or maybe the pursuit of all those things. They feel like it's killing them. It's causing them to be disconnected from who they really are or they're not balancing their life correctly. Um, and so that's an area that's great uh, where life coaching can really help. And so my specific specialty, the thing that I coach most on, is helping people that want to cut back on their drinking. I also help people quit, but my specific area is people that are drinking too much. They feel like it's affecting their health, maybe it's affecting their relationships, it's affecting their, their effectiveness and their motion in their lives, and they want to drink less, but they don't want to quit. They don't feel like they need to quit, but they, uh, they haven't been able to do that on their own with help, or maybe they're, they, they're able to cut back, but they struggle with willpower, or they're not reliable in their ability to cut back. And so this is, this is my specific area of focus. So let me talk a little bit about what happens in a session. So these take place, my sessions are an hour long, typically. Um, via phone or video conference. It's purely up to the client to pick w which one of those they want to use. And I ask a lot of questions, but it's not all just questions. I've got some concepts I want to teach. I think in my, my toolkit there's probably 20 concepts, and maybe only a few of them apply to any given client in a, in a given, at a given time or a given engagement. And so I don't teach these like school. I don't have, you know, it's not that the second session is boundaries and the third, se third session is the manual. Rather, I like to do all of my teaching in relationship to where a person is, to what's happening in their life, to the coaching we're doing about their specific life. Because that's how this stuff becomes useful and becomes relevant and sticks and becomes a, a skill and a tool that, that you can use forever. So coaching is very conversational. There's this broad framework of my program, but the sessions are conversational and they kind of follow the flow of what, what is important to you. Having said that, I lead the session. You don't have to come to the session with a topic or prepared to, to carry the conversation or anything like that. I, I make that happen. There's never any problem to come up with things to coach on and so you don't have to worry about carrying the conversation. It, it, can be a, it can be an hour of, even though it's intense conversation, it can be restful for you from that perspective. What sometimes happens in sessions is that people get a little bit irritated with me and uh, it's not always easy is I guess why I'm saying this and so like a situation might be that as an outside observer I can see that a person has a belief that's very very close to them very maybe their identity is tied up in this belief but I can see how this belief is at the core of why they're getting some result that they've told me they don't want or that it's causing them to act in a way that they've said they don't want so it's not a matter of me of judging somebody's beliefs. It's about me being able to see how that belief is contrary to, contradictory to what the person has said they want. And so in the process of pointing that out, and maybe pointing it out again and again, it can be off-putting for people and they get irritated. But it's okay, I hold space through that. It, it doesn't create conflict. And I have to say there's never been a time when somebody wasn't, uh, wasn't 
appreciative at the end, by the end of the session that I had held space in that way and that I had created the possibility for them to um, see what their beliefs were doing to them. So again, my, I, I highlight that to say that coaching is not always, being coached is not always easy. It can be emotional and, and challenging at times. I want to talk about the subject of homework. Is there homework? Well, yes, there is. So if you're the rare super engaged client and really want to dive into this, I can give you homework every day. And, and I would love that. I would love to see a person really dive into self-discovery using some of the tools I have. But I don't assign that. I don't expect that. Sometimes I'll give specific worksheets or specific areas where I'll recommend that a person do some introspection and some digging. And usually these involve written exercises during the week. I give sometimes small amounts of reading material, maybe a summary of a concept that we've talked about. And, and it will be, I know it will be valuable to, to the client if they take the time to do that. And if we're talking about drinking, for example, there are some real foundational exercises that need to be done in writing if a person really wants to, to guarantee that they create success for themselves, that they achieve their goals. But I'm not an accountability partner. There's no homework that's mandatory. Uh, coaching is valuable even if a person showed up during the week and didn't do the homework. And so what I'll do is I'll highlight what I see is the disadvantage of not doing the homework. Sometimes we can coach on the why a person didn't do the homework, and that can be very revealing. It can be a lot of insight, can be gold in that discussion. But I am not an accountability partner. I don't berate you, I don't criticize, I don't judge. I, in every session, in every minute, uh, meet you where you are and then do what we can do together to create insight and to create a room for progress. So that's about all I have to say. I want to share a little bit about my experience. When I first started getting coached and it was in coach training, I was often uncomfortable with it. Or I was nervous about it. I felt like the topics I had to, to bring to the table weren't very interesting or weren't very juicy or I'd feel like that they were simple and I should have figured them out already on my own or that maybe they were unsolvable, that I was bringing some, that I was just complaining, I was bringing up an issue that couldn't be solved. <clears throat> and I was always wrong. I um, was always able to get um, useful information from my coach. And, and sometimes this is just my, my peer coaches, people that were like me at the time, beginners. But the, the power of coaching and the power of the framework that we use is such that there's always value to it. And on top of that, it's just nice to be in a situation where you get to talk for an hour about yourself to somebody who's really paying close attention and asking, asking questions. And we don't get that very often, and it's, it's very nice. And you're in the presence of somebody who believes in you, believes in your ability to create what you want, probably more than you believe in yourself, and maybe more than other people have believed in you. And that's very powerful and very gratifying. So my hope and expectation is that as coaching gets more and more mainstream, more and more people will get to experience this because it's, um, it's a wonderful thing. And then on top of that, the ahas and the insights that you get from coaching and finally the, the motion that you make towards achieving big goals to making changes in, in life that seemed impossible. It's, it's just totally tremendous. So that's it. If you've got any questions, my email will be down below this. Drop me a note. I'd love to answer your questions and engage in a dialogue on this. So I hope this has been helpful, and I thank you for watching, and I wish you a great day. Goodbye.